We are group number nine and we have four members in the group. Vitalia Jokiko, Lofred Pulante, Hyunjin Kim and Tatiana Demchenko. During our presentation, we will be discussing and comparing two theories, Dorothea Oren's self-care deficit theory of nursing and Rosemary Parsi's human becoming theory. We will be talking about major concepts and main ideas of both theories, the advantages and disadvantages, main differences between the theories, and the value and usefulness to nursing. Let's begin. Dorothea Elizabeth Arden was born and brought up in Baltimore, Maryland. She received a diploma from the Providence Hospital School of Nursing in Washington, D.C. in 1934 and went on to the Catholic University of America to earn a B.S. in Nursing Education in 1939 and an M.S. in Nursing Education in 1945. RM's early nursing experiences included operating room nursing, private duty nursing, hospital staff nursing, and evening supervisor in the emergency room. She also taught biological sciences and nursing from 1939 to 1941. As a curriculum consultant, RM worked with schools, departments, and divisions of of nursing including George Brown College of Applied Arts and Technology. She was a member of the group of nurse theorists who presented patterns of unitary man in 1982. In 1971, RM published Nursing, Concepts of Practice that Outlined Self-Care Deficit Theory of Nursing. The success of this work established RM as a leading theorist of nursing practice and education. She authored many other papers. During 1970s and 1980s, she spoke at numerous conferences and workshops around the world. The International RM Society was founded to foster research and the continued development of RM theories of nursing. RM received the Catholic University of America Alumni Achievement Award for Nursing Theory in 1980, the Linda Richards Award from the National League for Nursing in 1991 and was named an Honorary Fellow of the American Academy of Nursing in 1992. At age 92, Dorothea Oram's life ended after a period of being bedridden. She died Friday, June 22, 2007 in Savannah, Georgia, where she had spent the last 25 years of her life as a consultant and author. Dr. Rosemary Parr is a graduate of Duquesne University and received her master's and doctorate degree from the University of Pittsburgh. Between the years 1983 to 2006, she assumed the positions including a member of the faculty, dean of the nursing school, professor, and coordinator in different universities. Since January 2007, she has been a consultant and visiting scholar at the New York University College of Nursing. She was the founder and current editor of Nursing Science Quarterly and president of Discovery International Incorporated. She is also founder of the Institute of Human Becoming. She has been given two Lifetime Achievement Awards. The Rosemary Parr Scholarship was endowed in her name at the Henderson State University. She was honored the Martha E. Rogers Golden Slinky Award and in 2008, she was the recipient of the New York Times Nurse Educator of the Year. She has published nine books and more than 100 articles and editorials about matters pertinent to nursing. Dr. Pars is a sought-after speaker who has shared her knowledge and passion in over 300 local, national, and international presentations and workshops in more than 30 countries on five continents. Pars' theory of human becoming theory was originally named Man Living Health in 1981 and changed by PARS to Human Becoming in 1992. Dr. PARS has planned and implemented many international conferences on nursing theory, the Human Becoming School of Thought, Qualitative Research, and Quality of Life. Major Concepts and Fundamental Ideas of Both Theories this involves the philosophical underpinnings and assumptions. Parsons' human becoming theory 
guides the practice of nurses to focus on the quality of life as it is described and lived. This model rates the quality of life from each person's own perspective. The assumptions underpinning this theory is structured around three abiding themes, meaning rhythmicity and transcendence. The model of Rosemary Pars makes an assumptions about man and becoming. In her first assumption, man's reality is given meaning through lived experiences. In addition, man and environment co-create. In her second assumption, human becoming is co-creating rhythmical patterns of relating in mutual process with the universe. Man and environment co-create in rhythmical patterns. Her third assumption, transcendence, explains that human becoming is co-transcending multidimensionally with emerging possibilities. It refers to reaching out and beyond the limits of persons set and that one constantly transform. But how does this all transforms into our understanding and participation? Parsis model is interpreted by explaining that a person is an open being and different and more capable. That the environment is everything and inseparable from the person and evolves with the person. That health is an open process and nursing is described as both science and art. What does this theory provide? Parsis theory provides a transformative approach to all levels of nursing. It is different from the traditional nursing process, particularly because it does not seek a fixed problem. Rather, it gives the nurses the ability to see patients' perspective and allow the nurses to grow with the client, guiding towards the health goals. It co-creates nurse-patient relationship and it leaves the art of human becoming. Now, comparing it to Dorothea Oren's theory, Dorothea Oren's theory applied to wide variety of patients. Although it is used to guide and improve practice, it has, however, be consistent with the other validated theories, laws, and principles. RM's theory has three parts, the theory of self-care, the theory of self-care deficit, and the theory of nursing system. The major assumptions of RM's self-care deficit theory are the following. People should be self-reliant and be responsible for their care, as well as others in their family who needs care. This is, however, based on the idea that people are distinct individuals, that nursing is a form of interaction between two or more people. In her theory, one important component of primary care prevention and ill health is successfully meeting self-care requisite. A person's knowledge of potential health problem is also needed for promoting self-care behaviors. Self-care and dependent care are behaviors learned within a social cultural context. Hello, uh, my name is Hyun Jin. I'm going to talk about one advantage and one disadvantage of the theory and after that I will discuss about key, difference, key differences between the two theories. First of all, I'm going to talk about one advantage of the uh, Owen self-care deficit theory. Uh, it provides a comprehensive base to the nursing practice. Uh, Orem's approach to the nursing process provides a method to determine the self-care deficit 
and then to define the roles of patient or nurse to meet the severe demands. The steps in the approach are thought of as the technical components of the nursing process. Also, it can easily be applied to a variety of nursing situations and patients. The generality of these principles and concepts make it easily adaptable to different settings, and nurses and patients can work together to ensure that the patient receives the best possible care. Second of all, um, I'm going to talk about one disadvantage. Um, one of the most obvious limitations of OM theory is that throughout her work, it can be said that a limited recognition of an individual's emotional needs is present within the theory. It focuses more on physical care and gives lesser emphasis to psychological care. Other theories address this limitation quite adequately, such as Jim Watson, Watson's theory of caring. Next, I will discuss about two um, key differences between uh, ORM self-care deficit theory and human becoming theory. The first difference is that utilizing nursing process. ORM theory, it considers the critical thinking process, commonly known as nursing process. She designed a version of nursing process, also known as practical practice methodology. Practice methodology includes four operations. Diagnostic operation, which, um, which is assessment in nursing process, and prescriptive operation, which is planning, um, planning, pro uh, planning steps in the nursing process. Regulatory operation um, is intervention in nursing process, and lastly, control operation is evaluation in the nursing process. On the other hand, human becoming theory. Um, it does not utilize the nursing process or a nursing diagnosis. Human becoming theory also have three dimensions in process. Uh, this process includes illuminating meanings, synchronizing rhythms, and mobilizing trans trans transcendence. These dimensions happen all at once, and the theory insists that persons cannot be assessed, controlled, or manipulated. Also, it differs from the traditional nursing process, particularly in that it does not seek to fix problems. The second difference is that applying the theory into the practice. In self-acuity vision nursing theory, it is illness oriented and specified when nursing is needed. It used, um, for example, if a patient is unable to meet their self-care uh, self-care requisite or self-care deficit occurs. In this case, the patient nurse the patient nurse steps in with a separate modality which can be total compensation, partial compensation, or education and support according to the patient's status. It uses in rehabilitation, primary care, and every other settings in which patients are encouraged to be independent. However, human becoming theory, uh, the model gives nurses the ability to see the patient perspective only. This allows the nurse to be with the patient and guide him or her toward the health goals. So it is not accessible to new nurses like novice nurse, and it is inapplicable to acute and emergent care. My part is done. Thank you. In the conclusion, I would like to briefly summarize both theories and express our group's opinion which theory is more useful for nurses. Dorothea Oren's self-care deficit theory of nursing focuses on person's requirements and what has to be done to meet those requirements. In her theory, Oren explains when nursing help is crucial. For example, in certain situations when the person cannot continue to provide self-care that is important for maintaining his or her health and life. 
or when the patient is recovering from a long-term disease or injury. According to Dorothea Oram, the nursing process focuses on establishing the degree of self-care deficit that the patients are experiencing and figuring out the functions of the nurse and the patient. Rosemary Parsa's human becoming theory refers to nursing as a human science and transforms its beliefs into developing a new knowledge. This theory supports nurses who wish to provide their care based on what the patient wants. Nurses who use the human becoming theory in their everyday practice more often include the patient and his or her family in their care. This theory is often used in research and education. While applying this theory into the nursing practice, many nurses admit that they are able to put themselves in the patient's situation and better understand the patient's position and needs. Therefore, nurses feel like they actively participate in every step during the patient's hospitalization and helping them to achieve the best outcomes. Our group thinks that although both theories are valuable source of knowledge for the nurses, Orem self-care self -care deficit theory of nursing is more useful for the nursing profession, and mainly because it can be used by the novice nurses as well as by the expert nurses, while Parsi's human becoming theory is not applicable to use for the novice nurses. Also, human becoming theory has a very limited application in the acute and emergent care which make a majority of the healthcare facilities in Canada. On the other hand, Orem's theory can be applied in a variety of practice settings where both the nurse and the patient work together. As an example, I see application of this theory in everyday nursing practice during my current clinical practice at one of the rehabilitation hospitals. There are nurses who work with the completely dependent patients, for example, with the cerebral palsy or recovering from car injuries, and physically cannot perform self-care. However, they strongly encourage such, such patients to gain their independency. Very often, it is a very long process that can take years, but if managed properly, the desired outcomes are reached. Thank you for the attention.